My name is Akko Stark and I'm the CEO of Marketing 180. We predominantly specialize in SEO and scaling e-commerce brands through our SEO efforts. So today we're going to share with you some of the greatest white hat SEO techniques that we have used and some techniques that you can utilize in your own SEO campaigns. One of the best uh, starter techniques with the white hat SEO is a good quality content. You do not want to use uh, any artificial intelligence writing softwares to rewrite other people's content because first of all, it don't sound natural and you can actually detect that the content is just no good. So if the content is no good, that user's coming onto it, they're going to catch up to it because we're in 2022 now and people are not dumb. If they see something that's poor quality, they're going to leave immediately. If you cannot come up with your own content, best thing for you to do is to go into platforms like Fiverr or Upwork if you have some more money to spend and just hire a freelancer to do your own website content. Uh, it will be more quality work than using artificial intelligence tools to spin the content for you. It's best you keep things natural and you keep things up to the quality standards because Google does care about pleasing their users. And if your uh, website doesn't have a content that's retaining users, you will be subject to getting declassified in its algorithm as a reputable source. Second most important thing would be your title and keywords across your website. Next focus would be the ease of navigation. You want to make sure the users are able to easily discover the content that they're, they're looking for on your website. For them to easily navigate across, you do not want to have a cluster looking website. Uh, more simpler your website is, more better it will perform. And, and from my experience, just working with so many different e-commerce brands, more simple the website is. Uh, I mean, not only the retention is, is good on the websites, but also the conversions uh, you know, are much higher than just a website that's super clustered. One of the most important white hat SEO highlights is your website performance. If that website is slow, you better focus on upgrading that speed. That can happen by optimizing your website from the code side of the things, or sometimes that could even be through your hosting. You can just upgrade the hosting and have a better hosting. But if you can't afford to, you know, have your own dedicated server or switch over to some more of a quality server, um, you're going to have to kind of like, you know, fight it through, but it comes down to having a fast website. When you're shopping, you do not want to have a slow buffering experience before you get to the product that you want to buy, because guess what? We are all consumers. We get excited when we buy. And then when we have something in our mind that we're searching for and we find it, and if we buy that item, we want to get it now. And in fact, we have no patience to wait from the shipping end of it. So like if we can even get to the item, but we want it, it's going to be a bad experience if the website is slow. So you want to focus on increasing that website speed, optimize that for performance and make sure it is fast as a lightning strike. If you don't have any capabilities of actually optimizing your website's code for faster performance, you can actually go to sources like Fiverr or Freelancer or even Upwork.com to find somebody that can do. There is many people that offer the service as part of their freelancer operations. And guess what? They are actually on point. We've actually tested several of these people and they actually did a great job. I know I mentioned these brands a lot, but trust me, I am not sponsored by them. Another great white hat method is to have a quality internal linking structure across your website and you want to be consistent with this the idea of this is to direct your users to the relative pages to the pages that they're looking at. And um, basically when you go into the website and then like basically you're looking at the page and then there is a link on that page that directs you to another link within that website. That is exactly the idea of internal linking structure. I'm just trying to explain this to a very basic level so that you understand there is no need to use any complicated terms or show off who's the smarter SEO professional, because essentially that is what you want to achieve with the uh, internal linking structure and uh, better linking structure that you have accomplished on your website. Uh, Google acknowledges 
this kind of website as a, as a credible sources who have done great job at the on page optimization and basically gives you the good quality points that's used to rank you higher in search engine results. Analyzing some of the experience that you have had with some of the online websites that you've shopped in the past. So it kind of gives you an idea of how you should structure your own website because website, you got to think of it as building an actual retail store, creating an experience for your potential uh, customers. Uh, so that would be a good foundational standpoint to structure your mindset. Now I'm going to share with you some of the things you need to avoid in your whitehead SEO efforts. Keyword staffing. That is one of the things that you need to avoid. This is like 2000s SEO and you do not want to be nearby doing anything with, you know, hiding keywords and, you know, overlaying the code to track the search engines, none of that stuff. Overstaffing your meta title and meta descriptions. That is when you're stuffing keywords into your meta titles, when the particular page is focused on, for example, like one keyword or a variation of the keyword and you're literally like putting like three, four different variations in, into that meta title or like staffing the crap out of meta description. That does not help the search engines and that does not help your website overly. This is probably the internet's most favorite link farming. Uh, what that means is basically placing your links on the websites that are not related to your niche, uh, related to your products at all. Um, so good example for this would be like, let's say if the website is selling energy drinks, right? And then you are selling flower plants, you placing your anchor uh, keyword uh, text onto that website, that's selling energy drinks and linking it back to your flower website, having no relation to your niche at all. That's a big no, no, you should not be doing that. And you should completely avoid doing that at all cost. You might get away with this for a little while, but Google uses a very smart artificial intelligence system to detect these kind of efforts. And eventually they will detect it. And when they do, you will be penalized. Another one would be the content cloaking, and that is something you should avoid at all costs. And what it is, is it's a practice that's basically designed to show search engines a, a, a different style of a content that's not actually what you are showing to the users. And that's something that needs to be avoided at all costs, because if you get caught, this can be a dangerous game and your website could be subject to penalties and getting out of these is kind of tricky. Lastly, you want to avoid publishing bad content onto your website because that poorly reflects on you and does not bring any benefits or value to your users. Think of it this way. You are searching for an information. You have a question in your mind and then you come across a website that is completely clueless of what you're asking does not provide you any answer, does not provide you any value that you're looking for. It's completely useless to you. What do you do? You back in your browser and then move on to the next search result. You don't want to be that guy. When you publish your content, focus on quality. And if you're in a niche that you're an expert in, focus on answering all your uh, customer questions through the content that you publish on your website, because not only you're bringing the value to the users uh, that are coming onto your website, but also Google acknowledges you as a reputable member in your niche, as a, as a company that brings value in that niche. And then basically uh, gives you this authoritative score that you are a niche authority website. And then they actually boost you higher in the search engine rankings. And I know there is a lot of different signals that contribute to getting the rankings established and actually moved on the first page of Google. But one of the ways that really has uh, uh, shown some crazy level of movement is demonstrating your authority in the niche by covering many different topics that are surrounding around your niche. So if you're going to publish content, make sure you focus on publishing quality content so that you can give your users value and that Google can acknowledge you as a reputable uh, website.
you don't have to do any like black hat SEO uh, campaigns or anything like that to you know rank higher. You can actually do things white hat way. And uh, if you do things right, and if you really are benefiting the, the Google's users, Google's gonna love your website. It's gonna you know rank you higher and it's gonna be on your side. And ultimately that is what you wanna try to establish some sort of a partnership with Google. So that way you can get what you want and Google can get what they want as well. And that is how successful partnerships work and start doing things this way.